Hi there, in this screencast we're going to be covering the fundamentals of Scratch by making a simple maze game. So I'm hoping that you're already logged in so that you can share your work if you need to. And let's get started. So we're going to start off by using some of these movement blocks here. So if I drag one of these and then click on it, I can get the cat to move. And I'm going to use one of our basic fundamentals of looping to make that happen forever. Now when I click on this, Scratch quickly moves across the screen because this is happening over and over again. I can slow that down a bit if I want to by changing this number here called a parameter to a smaller number and then we can see Scratch is moving a lot more slowly. So let's add some interactivity. We're going to be using the concept of events here. So let's click on the events tab and choose the when space key is pressed event. And you can see that the shape of these means that they can't have things on top of them. They can only have things underneath them. So let's change this space to a left arrow. And then in motion, we'll take one of these turn commands, which rotates the character. So let's have a look at what happens when I click that. Great. So when the left key is pressed, Probably I want him to go that way. I can right click to duplicate and now say that when the right arrow is pressed, I'm going to turn the other way and let's start him off and check that I can move. Great. So I've got the basics of my control down. Now we need a maze for him to navigate through. So down here in the stage, we've got these four different ways of creating a new backdrop. We've got choosing something from a library, drawing something ourselves, uploading something, or using a camera. So let's go ahead and draw something ourselves. One of the nice things about Scratch 2 is we've got vectors. So if you click on Convert to Vector, what that means is if I draw a line and I don't like how it is, I can click on the arrow button, choose it, and now I can move it around, I can rotate it, I can change it inside, in size. So I'm going to draw a red maze. Maybe I'll have slightly thicker lines for Scratch to navigate through. Great. Now I need to click back on the cat, now our Scratch character. Move them down here. And then in our script, if I start him off, I can try and get to the end of the maze. At the moment, he's a bit too big, though. So let's use our shrink tool up here. If we repeatedly click on him, we can get him to the appropriate size. I've probably got some hope of doing that. OK, so let's make it so that when we click the green flag, it starts the game and gets him to go to where we want him to start off from. So if you take a look at these two numbers here in this go to command, if I drag him over here, you can see that they get updated. So that's really convenient because I can grab that out and then I can say, OK, which way do I want him to start off? Let's make him point up. Put those two together so now no matter where he is and what direction he's pointed in if i click those two he gets taken back and pointed in the right direction if we put them on top of our loop and take a when green flag event and stick that on the top then when i click the green flag it's going to send an event to this that's going to trigger this sequence of things to happen so he points in the right direction goes to the right place and then starts our movement loop off. So let's check if that works. Press the green flag. Great. And he's off. And I've got to try and navigate through the maze without hitting anything. As you can see, it doesn't matter at the moment if I do hit something, nothing's, nothing stops me. So let's use another concept in programming, which is a conditional to ask the question if Scratch has hit something. So over in sensing, I've got this block here, touching color. And if I click on it, my pointer turns to a finger and I can choose the color I want to detect, that red color. And let's test it out now. If I drag Scratch to a white area and click on it, it pops up and says false. 
if I drag him to a wall, click on it, it says true. So that lets me use it in this conditional block here, the if then block. And you can see that this hexagonal type of block fits into that hexagonal space there. And now I can ask the question, if he's touching the red color, then do something. So what's he going to do? Let's make him say, oh no, for two seconds. And then let's duplicate these two blocks here so that when he hits a wall, he starts back at the beginning. So right click, duplicate. I don't want this forever loop, so I'm going to break that off there, throw that away. Drop that in there and let's see if it works. So if I click on it, oh no, and send him back to the home. Brilliant. So if I start my program running, I can see that it's running because it's got this golden highlight on it, but my conditional, that's never being asked, so I can still walk through the walls. So what I need to do is drop that in here, so as well as moving, Scratch is also being asked all the time whether he's touching the red color, and now my conditional is working. So that's great. Let's say that I want the game to do something different when he gets to this end point here. So we can use exactly the same um, color touching technique. If I go back to our stage, backdrop, and maybe make a green circle. Right, that just made a, a hollow circle because I was um, chosen on the outline. So let's click that again, and I can choose a filled one instead. There we go. And then back in my script, I can duplicate this block here and say if he's touching the green, then we can say hooray for two seconds and get him back where he was. So let's see if that works. I'm going to cheat by dragging him over here where I've got a hope of finishing it. There we go. And that's the end of this section. Thank you.